Good morning, Freedom Family. Uh, it's good to be with y'all here, I guess, in spirit more than anything else. Uh, I hate that we can't be together in person, but, you know, circumstances the way they are, it's just amazing to be able to, to still worship together in the comfort of our homes. So uh, wherever you are now, let's just uh, put ourselves in a mindset of worship. Let's worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquer the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awaken to life. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. You've been faithful through every storm. You'll be faithful forevermore. You have done great things. And I know you will do it again. For your promises, yes and amen. You will do great things. God, you do great things. Oh, hero of heaven. Oh, hero of heaven. You conquer the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awaken alive. Oh, Jesus. Our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God, you have done great things. Sing hallelujah. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. Hallelujah, you have done great things. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. Hallelujah, you have done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquer the grave. You freed every captive and break every chain, oh, God. You have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awaken alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. You have done great things. Oh, God, you do great things. Praise God. He has done great things. Amen. And we're so glad that you're here with us this morning, as Jimbo said, in spirit. And we are thankful um, that God can allow us to still be together with everything that's going on. And uh, we just want to welcome each and every one of you with us today. And we just pray that God will touch you 
uh, right there where you're at, whether you're at home, whether you're uh, sitting out on your porch, whether you're driving in your car, wherever you are, God is there. And God is and, and God has and God is going to continue uh, to do great things. And we're so thankful for that today. And uh, we just want to say that we miss you and we want to say that uh, uh, we wish we could be together, but circumstances being what they are, uh, we're not able to. We've had a, um, um, a few people that have tested positive uh, for COVID, so we thought it would be the best thing to do and the appropriate thing to do for the protection of everybody and for our guests and, uh, to take a couple of weeks off and allow everybody to get healed up and, and uh, hopefully this will dissipate and, and disappear and get away from us so that we can get back together again because there are some exciting things going on here at Freedom Fellowship. There's a spirit of revival uh, that is uh, something I haven't seen in quite some time, and I'm just so excited about it and, and thankful for that. And uh, just want to remind everyone uh, that uh, with everything being as it is with this COVID protocol that we're in, uh, we'll be having another uh, uh, online service this Wednesday, uh, and that will be uh, Wednesday the 4th at 7 o'clock. So we want to remind you that uh, we'll be online on that day as well. So we want you to um, just uh, tune in with us and, and be a part of that. And... Um, if, if you can, um, uh, tune in with us. And I think somebody's at the door. If y'all go address that, please. Uh, also, uh, tentative, tentatively, we uh, are scheduling to be back uh, with in-person service uh, next Sunday. Uh, that'll be the 8th at 10 o'clock. Uh, we will an announce our final decision on the 4th on Wednesday night as we give an update uh, but as it stands right now, uh, hopefully with, with no further um, uh, COVID cases being diagnosed, uh, we'll be here on the 8th, and uh, we want to encourage everybody to come and be a part of that. Uh, if you want uh, to uh, wear a mask, that's fine as well. Uh, also, we want to encourage people to be praying about, uh, you know, uh, the vaccinations, um, it is proven now, even with uh, some of us here, that it's been helpful. Uh, so just pray about that. But that, again, is your own personal uh, decision, and we stand with you uh, on that regardless of what your decision is. Then I also want to announce that, uh, tentatively again, uh, we will, uh, on the 15th, uh, the following Sunday after we're back on the 8th, we will be speaking a prophetic word that God has given us uh, for the body of Christ. So we want to encourage everybody to uh, tune in and, and be with us and be a part of that as well. And we're excited about what God is speaking into the earth in these last days. And uh, we are seeing a return uh, nationally and globally uh, to, to God, a return back to God, a return uh, with repentance and a cry for revival and restoration. And we are seeing that transpire uh, right before our eyes, and we're so thankful for that. Also, just want to uh, announce that there will be a baby shower uh, for Taylor and Matt White. Uh, that'll be on Tuesday, August the 10th at 6 o'clock downstairs in the Children's Church area. Uh, Taylor is registered at Target and Amazon, and it's a girl. Also, we want to announce that the baby shower that was scheduled for Angel Shanklin in July has been rescheduled for Tuesday, August the 24th at 6 p.m., also downstairs in the Children's Church area. And Angel is uh, registered also at Target, and she is having a boy. Amen. So we're excited about all of that, so we want you... Uh, to mark that on your calendar. Also, there's been several people inquiring uh, to us about their uh, offering options. Uh, there are two ways that you can do it right now. Uh, you can mail it at P.O. Box 302, Radford, Virginia. The zip code is 24141. 
Or you can go to our website at freedomfellowshipradford.org, go to our donate button, and take care of it that way as well. And we're excited today about the word that God has given us. And I pray today that you will begin as we as we come back into a time of worship with Jimbo. I want you to just set your heart, your spirit, your mind on receiving of what God has to speak to our hearts and into our lives today. As we worship together, just just move the coffee table, you know, get the kids out of the way and take a moment today and worship with us as we glorify the King. You hear me when I call, you are my morning song. Though darkness fills the night, it cannot hide the light. Whom shall I fear? You crush the enemy underneath my feet. You are my sword and shield. Though troubles linger still, whom shall I fear? I know who goes before me, I know who stands behind. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The one who reigns forever, he is a friend of mine. The God of angel armies is always by my side. My strength is in your name, for you alone can save. You will deliver me, yours is the victory. Whom shall I fear? And whom shall I fear? Yeah, I know who goes before me. I know who stands behind. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The one who reigns forever, he is a friend of mine. The God of angel armies is always by my side nothing formed against me shall stand you hold the whole world in your head i'm holding on to your promises you are faithful you are faithful for oh, nothing formed against me shall stand you hold the whole world in your head i'm holding on to your promises you are faithful you are faithful you are faithful. I know who goes before me. I know who stands behind. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The one who reigns forever. He is a friend of mine. The God of angel armies is always by my side. I know who goes before me. I know who stands behind. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The one who reigns forever. He is a friend of mine. The God of angel armies is always by my side the god of angel armies 
is always by my side. Yes, he is. Amen. Aren't you glad of that this morning? Aren't you glad that God is always there with you and fighting the battle on your behalf? The battle is not yours. It belongs to him. Amen. And I want to speak to you today something that's been on my heart for quite some time. And as many of you know, and especially our Freedom family, and we just want to say once again that we love you guys and we appreciate you so much and we miss you. And I can't wait till next week till we can get back together again. Uh, but uh, there's been, a, as I mentioned earlier, a spirit of revival that has just been permeating uh, the last several weeks here at Freedom Fellowship. And God is, I believe, preparing us as individuals and as a, as a group and as a church and as a body uh, for what God is getting ready to do in the earth. And I believe that God is getting ready to uh, show himself in a very, very significant way in this earth. And I believe that as we came together this past September and we had a clarion call uh, from, from Washington, D.C. Uh, to return back to God and to repent and to cry out for revival, uh, God is honoring that and that remnant group of people that is doing that. And God is showing up in a very significant way. And we're so thankful for that. But I just want to say this morning that where we have been and where we are is not where we're headed. And we got to, we must, in fact, raise our eyes to the horizon and, and realize and look for and recognize uh, God's coming glory upon the earth. And what I want to talk to you about uh, this morning is the tabernacle of David being restored in the earth. And uh, I want to read from First uh, Chronicles chapter 13. I'm going to be also reading in First Chronicles chapter 15. And I, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago a little bit, uh, talking about when David brought back the ark of God and how it had been in... Uh, the house of Abinadab and how God had blessed the house of Abinadab and and then David brought the ark. But I want to I want to show you something in First Chronicles chapter thirteen, an incident that happened uh, that uh, a, a man touched the ark of God, the the ark of the covenant, and he touched it when he was not permitted to. And that's how important it is that we understand and reverence the presence of God, even here in, in, in 2021. Uh, so I want to read this story, and then I want to show you a couple of things and, and, and show you how the glory of God was, was restored to Israel. As you well know, and we've been talking about in our study of the Harbingers on Wednesday night, that is, ancient Israel is a mirror image of not only the present-day United States, but also is a mirror of, of the church. And so we see all these parallels running uh, through Scripture over and over and over again. And so I want to uh, use that same parallel in this Scripture this morning. In First Chronicles chapter 13, beginning in verse 1, the Bible says, And David had consulted with the captains of thousands and hundreds and with every leader. And David said unto all the congregation of Israel, If it seem good unto you, and that it might be of the Lord our God, let us send abroad unto our brethren everywhere that are left in all the land of Israel, and with them also to the priests and the Levites, which are in their cities and suburbs, that they may gather themselves unto us. And let us bring again the ark of our God to us, for we inquired not at it in the days of Saul. And all the congregation said that they would do so, for the thing was right in the eyes of all the people. Now, I want you to understand that what might seem right is not always right. <clears throat> what seems right in the eyes of men may be a good idea, but what we're Wanting to see is not a good idea. We want to see a God idea. And so this is what we see playing out in this, in this scripture today. Verse 5. So David gathered all Israel together from Shihar of Egypt even unto the entering of 
entering of Hemath to bring the ark of God from Kerjath Jerem. And David went up and all of Israel to Bala, that is to Kerjath Jerem, which belongeth to Judah, <clears throat> to bring to bring up thence the ark of God the Lord that dwelleth between the cherubim, whose name is called on it. Talking about the Ark of the Covenant. And they carried the Ark of God in a new cart. That was their first mistake. Out of the house of Abinadab, and Uzzah and Hio drove the cart. And David and all of Israel played before God with their might, with all their might, and was singing and with harps and psalm trees and with tim timbrels and with cymbals and with trumpets. And when they came into the threshing floor of Tidon, Uzzah put forth his hand to hold the ark, for the oxen had stumbled. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah, and he smote him because he put his hand to the ark, and there he died before God. And David was displeased because the Lord had made a breach upon Uzzah. Therefore the place is called Perez Uzzah to this day. And David was afraid of God that day, saying, How shall I bring the ark of God home to me? So David brought not the ark home to himself to the city of David, but carried it aside into the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite. And we know that God blessed Obed-Edom and his household in everything that he did. All right? So we have to, uh, we have to understand that the, that the presence of God, and we talked about this a couple weeks ago, that the presence of God represented the blessing of God. And the ark of God remained with the family of Obed-Edom in his house three months, and the Lord blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that he had. Now let's go to chapter 15 real quickly, the first four verses. And David made him houses in the city of David and prepared a place for the ark of God and pitched for it a tent. And David said, none ought to carry the ark of God but the Levites. Remember, before they had put it on a new cart. But now he's telling them to do it as God had instructed in the beginning, that it is to be carried by the Levites. Then David said, none ought to carry the ark of God but the Levites, for them hath the Lord chosen to carry the ark of God and to minister unto him forever. And David gathered all Israel together to Jerusalem to bring up the ark of the Lord into his place, which he had prepared for it. And, a, and David assembled the children of Aaron and the Levites. And so we see here in this story today that, and there's a very significant parallel to us here in this day, in 2021, you see, when David saw what had happened to Uzzah, he returned to Jerusalem. And what he did was he diligently sought the knowledge of God. And for three months, he had sought the will, the purpose, and the plan of God. And then after he had, had, had sought God, we find, as we read a moment ago in First Chronicles 15 and 2, that David said, none ought to carry the ark of God but the Levites, for them the Lord have chosen to carry the ark of God. You see, God had, had, had purpose from the very beginning that the ark of God, that the presence of God, if you will, was to be handled in a certain way. And so this time, there was no gathering of men for a discussion as it was in chapter 13. And once David had discovered that God's counsel had given him the direction that he needed, he boldly set that plan into motion. And he summoned Israel and separated the descendants of Aaron and the Levites. And then he said to those priests in verses 12 and 13, he said unto them, Ye are the chief of the fathers of the Levites. Sanctify yourselves, both ye and your brethren, that ye may bring up the ark of the Lord God of Israel unto the place that I prepared for it. Now watch this in verse, uh, verse 13. For because he did not at the first, the Lord our God made a breach upon us, for that we sought, not, uh, sought him not after the due order or in divine order. 
Now, there was a breach made. In other words, there was a separation that took place with the presence of God and the people of God because they had mishandled his presence. And we are witnessing right here today in America, there has been a breach made. There has been a breach in the hedge of protection that, uh, that, that America has known for many years uh, that God has given America this protective hedge uh, for many, many years. And starting in, in uh, 2001 on uh, September the 11th, 9-11-2001, a breach had come into the hedge of protection of America, which brought judgment. And we know that that judgment has continued. It continued in 2008 with a financial uh, collapse. Why? Because America did not repent and turn back to God. But instead, uh, with their arrogance, said, we'll build bigger and we'll build better. And because of their arrogance, God brought a second uh, wave of judgment in 2008. And then America would not uh, repent still. And America began to even turn further and further away from God with the killing of our unborn and, and totally taking God out of the structure of our society to the point now that we have seen in 2020 this pandemic and now another strand of it and other things are yet to come. I believe that America is about to see its greatest financial collapse. Uh, maybe that would even uh, the uh, the uh, the Great Depression, uh, Depression would pale in comparison to what is about to take place upon this nation if we don't turn back to God. And it is not the responsibility of our political leaders. It's not the responsibility of the Democrats or the Republicans or the Independents. It is the responsibility of the church of Jesus Christ to get this nation back to God. Amen. So we see that a proper order for these priests called for them to be sanctified and dedicated uh, for bearing the ark which represented the presence of God. This time, the ark was brought to Jerusalem into the tabernacle that David had prepared. You see, ladies and gentlemen, we got to prepare ourselves for the presence of God. And once again, the Bible tells us that God's glory was restored to Israel. And I'm calling upon the body of Christ today to get in preparation to prepare ourselves for the glory of God. And it takes more than just religious calisthenics. It takes more than going through the religious figures. It takes more than going through the traditions of our religious uh, rituals. We have got to come back to a place of getting on our face and crying out to God to bring revival to this nation and it must begin at the house of God. Amen. You see, our proper order for bearing his presence is found in the recesses of our hearts. It is within the heart of each and every individual that we must prepare for God is about to reveal his glory on the earth like it has never been seen before. In fact, he declares in Numbers chapter 14 and verse 21, but as, uh, but as truly as I live, saith the Lord, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. You see, God is wanting us to prepare our tabernacle, our hearts, our holy temple. We are the temple of the living God. Paul said, know ye not that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. You are the temple of God. And when God made this statement in Numbers 14 and 21, in fact, the Bible says uh, that he was was grieved by the fact that his people would not believe him or even obey him. 
And the implication is that there will be a time that will come in the future. And I believe that we are on the precipice of that time. We are at the threshold of that time right now. Amen. That they would be people that would fear him and therefore would unconditionally obey him in everything that he has declared. And he, I believe that God is preparing that these believers would manifest his glory for they would be the temple of his glory. In fact, later God spoke through the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 60, verses one through three. He said, arise, shine, for the light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness to people but the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee and the Gentiles shall come by thy light and the kings to the brightness of his rising. In other words God is telling us that when his glory shines upon us amen that it will it will shine a light into the world. Amen. Notice Isaiah says that the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Yet we, are, we have also heard that the glory is described as the latter rain. You see, ladies and gentlemen, God compared the release of his latter rain to the flood in Noah's time. In fact, in, in Genesis chapter 7 and verse uh, 11, the Bible says, and all the fountains of the great deep were broken up and the windows of heaven were opened. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of this dry and thirsty land in which we're living in. I'm dry. I'm, I'm sick and tired of this dry and thirsty religious culture that we're living in. I want the windows of heaven to be opened. I want the glory of God to rain down upon this earth. His restored glory, the Bible says, will rise upon those who have prepared, who have made preparation in their hearts for him, and it will fall upon the nations of the world. I'm declaring right now that no city will be unaffected by the latter reign of the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. You see, God says that his glory will be restored to his people and even unbelievers will be drawn to his life. The book of Amos, the prophet, tells us that in that day, speaking of the last days, will I ra uh, raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen. There it is, folks. There it is. I will raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen. When will he do it? In the last days. And he says, and I will close up the breaches. That breach that is on America right now. That breach of judgment, amen, that is upon America right now. It will be closed up. Why? Because revival will come to the land of America and close up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old. You see, ladies and gentlemen, Gentlemen, that God's glory will be restored to the church. It will be restored to our nation and it will exceed the glory as it was in the days of David. Hallelujah. James quoted this scripture to the uh, elders and the leaders of the church and applied it to the last days by saying in Acts chapter 15, verses 14 through 18, he said, Simeon hath declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. And to this agree the words of the prophets as it is written. After this, I will return and build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down, and I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up. And the rest 
residue. There it is, folks. That's the remnant church and the residue of men might seek after the Lord and all the Gentiles. That's us. Amen. Upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord who doeth all these things, known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. You see, by the Spirit, James saw this great harvest of believers coming into the kingdom with the restoration of his glory being revealed in the last days. And he speaks prophetically. But he did not complete Amos' message, for we read later on in Amos chapter 9 and verse 13. Listen to what the word of God says. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes him that soweth seed and the mountain shall drop sweet wine and all the hills shall melt. In other words, God is saying that the harvest is going to be so abundant that the reaper will be so loaded with work that he will not be able to complete the work before the plowman comes to prepare the fields for the next season. In other words, it's, it's like this. The New Living Translation says it this way. The time will come, says the Lord, when the grain and the grapes will grow faster than they can be harvested. Simply put, God is describing a harvest so abundant that it will be overflowing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm, I'm speaking this right now to the world. I'm speaking this right now to the church. There's a harvest coming that is going to be so abundant we won't be able to handle it all. Amen. I'm telling you, watch for this day for it is rapidly approaching us. The time is short. Do not resist God's purifying work and neglect the knowledge of the Lord in what he is doing right now. God, give us the spirit of Issachar that we can discern the time and the season for which we're leaving. living. Hallelujah. You see the cry of the spirit today, the cry of heaven today is prepare the way of the Lord by making his people ready for his glory. Preparation for his glory. And as God restores his glory, let us please, God, help us be wise to learn from David and his men on how to handle, how to facilitate, and how to respect and reverence the presence of God. Amen. God help us. These events were recorded for more than just a historical purpose. For we are told in Romans 15 and 4, for whatever things were written beforehand were written for our learning. And now that we have laid this foundation for understanding the times and the seasons for which we're living, it is time for us to pursue the importance of learning to walk in the fear of the Lord, to walk in preparation for his glory, his manifested presence upon the earth. Let me tell you, what's going to help America is not going to come from Washington, D.C. What's got, What uh, America needs and what is going to help America is not going to come from a political forum. It is going to come from the body of Christ. Hallelujah. So now that we've laid this foundation for understanding the times, we need to learn to walk in the fear of God. God spoke to me the other day and he said this last day's revival that brings the harvest in will be the restoration of the tabernacle of David. And I got to thinking about that. I thought, what is the, uh, the restoration of the tabernacle of David? What, what is the tabernacle of David? Of course, we know that was the tabernacle that housed the glory of God, the presence of God, the ark of God. But then the Lord spoke to me that when God restores the tab tabernacle of David upon the earth in the church in these last days, it is going to be a revival of restored worship. A revival of restored worship. You see, ladies and gentlemen, David was a worshiper. David was a worshiper. 
So many Psalms are written as David being a worshiper. And I believe that there is a greater level of worship coming in his presence. But we're not going to pre- we're not going to worship in the presence and the atmosphere created by man. But we're going to worship in the atmosphere created by the presence of God's glory. And the Lord spoke this into me yesterday. And I want especially Freedom Fellowship Church and especially our our men's group in which revival fires have begun. The revival that we're seeing here at Freedom Fellowship actually got ignited through our men's fellowship, our men's mentoring group. And this is what the Lord spoke to me. He said a revelation of His Word is coming in worship. And I thought, Lord, what do you mean by a revelation of your Word is coming in worship? And then I got to thinking about it. I got to thinking about how message after message after message from this person and that person, from Todd and from Abigail and from others, how a message after message is coming forth out of a heart of worship. I can't tell you how many profound sermons have, have been birthed out of the out of the out of the atmosphere uh, and the and the heart of worship a lot of times mowing grass amen Aaron's back there shaking his head he's got he, he's 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 on deck getting ready to get in the batter's box but all these messages that are coming forth and i believe the prophetic word of god is going to become more and more profound and I believe the prophetic word is going to come more and more uh, instantaneously upon this earth as men and women prepare themselves for the glory of God and and the restoration of the tabernacle of David is restored and people are going to worship at another level people are going to worship in the divine atmosphere of the presence of God not a not a not a atmosphere created by man and by hype it's not going to be created by religious rituals it's going to be created by the very presence of God and as we worship in the presence of God God's going to give us profound utterance and profound messages that are going to come forth out of a heart of worship the word of God going into the earth the Bible says that when that happens the Gentiles and the unbelievers are going to come so rapidly that we can't we can't facilitate them quick enough how are we going to handle that pastor how the church is going to handle that we're going to handle it the same way we prepare for it by the knowledge of God what God performs God facilitates see we just need to get that's the problem with the church today too many men are trying to get in the way too many denominations are, are trying to think how can we how can we feed our denomination how can we how can we feed our machinery of this denomination and keep it going with all these people that are coming you're going to miss it if that's your idea I'll just tell you right now I'm just speaking to you right now you're going to miss it you won't have to worry about it because if all you're concerned about is keeping your denomination afloat It's already sinking. People are not coming to hear about a denomination. People that are lost today don't give a holy flip about your denominational doctrine or bylaws. They just want to find Jesus. They just want to get in the presence of God. And God says there's coming a harvest 
that is going there's going to be so much harvest that we can't handle it before the next season comes. Hallelujah. I can't wait. Amen. I can't wait. So I want you to understand this morning that God is doing something in the earth. In the midst of the judgment that is upon this nation because it has turned its back on God, it is the greatest opportunity for the church of Jesus Christ. And it's up to us, His church, to prepare for His glory. Amen. If you have any prayer requests, while Jimbo's uh, leading us in worship, uh, send those prayer requests in. They'll put them up on the screen. We're going to come back in just a moment and pray. We're going to pray for God's glory to fill the earth. We're going to pray for those that have been affected by this last wave of, of COVID. The folks here, at our freedom family that's been affected by it. The Lord told me to speak forth healing today. Instant healing. Accelerated healing. In Jesus' name. But we're going to come back and do that in just a moment. But I want you to worship with Jimbo.
Father, we give everything today. All I am, all I have, all I ever hope to be, God. Lord, I just want to be in your presence. Is that your, is that your desire this morning? Is that your desire today? I know we're confined by time and distance right now, but I feel the presence of God. I feel the presence of God in this house, even though they ain't but four of us in here. I feel his presence. And I believe that the glory of the Lord is going to fill the whole earth, just like he said. He's going he's to fill those that have prepared themselves for it. Those that have shunned everything else, all the rituals, all the sin, all the garbage, all the distractions, and prepared themselves as a temple of His glory. And when that glory begins to shine forth in the earth, he says that it's going to bring the masses, the lost, the dying, the hurting, the helpless, the hopeless. He's going to bring them. You better be ready for them. They're going to dirty up your pews. They're going to stain your carpet. Your kids are going to misbehave. They're going to do everything in the world to mess up your pretty little structure of the box that you put God in. But get ready for it. Get ready for it. I feel like T.D. Jakes. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Amen. Don't want to steal nobody's thunder. But get ready. Amen. Amen. we got several people that we want to be praying for today. Is Angel the first one? Okay, here we go. We got prayer requests for Dale, for Fan, uh, Franny, Fanny, for Angel, for Charity. God, touch them right now in the name of Jesus. Just keep them up and then go to the next ones. Father, just touch those right now in Jesus' name. God, I pray that you would touch Dale. Lord, touch Sister Fanny right now. God, right there, just go three houses down. God, touch them right now. Touch them right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Touch them right now in Jesus' name. God, bring healing and strength to their body. God, touch Angel right now. God, I pray that you would give her peace that surpasses all understanding, that will guard, that will keep her heart and mind through Christ Jesus. God, let her know that they that are for her are much more than they that are against her, God. Let her know that the battle's not hers, but God, that it belongs to you. And the outcome has already been determined. The outcome has already been determined. Hallelujah. God, touch them today. Touch them today, God. Lord, touch Sammy in Montana today. Touch their family. God, bring healing. Lord, I speak, I speak healing over Sammy right now. God, I pray that you would accelerate healing in his body in Jesus' name right now. God, we pray that you would touch Jim Repus. God, we pray that you would touch him right now. God, I pray that you would bring healing to his body. God, I pray that the blood flow would begin to go through his body, God, and I pray God, that you would heal him. God, I pray that that fluid, God, that's been gathering in his body would dissipate and disappear right now in Jesus' name. God, touch Mary. Hash today, God, touch her right now, God. And God, I pray that whatever it is that's causing the dizziness in her, in, in her, in her uh, head right now, God, I pray that you would touch her, God, and heal her in Jesus' name. God, touch Montana's mom in Jesus' name right now. Hallelujah. God, I pray that you would accelerate healing. Touch David right now in Jesus' name. David Questionberry, touch him too, God, right now in Jesus' name. 
God, I pray in Jesus' name that you'd bring healing from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. Hallelujah. God, touch David and Morgan. God, I pray right now that you'd accelerate healing right now. I speak acceleration right now. God, I pray that the congestion would dissipate and disappear out of his body right now. In Jesus' name, Father. Not by might nor by power, but by your spirit, God. By the spirit of the living God. By whose stripes we are already healed. I decree and declare healing right now. And I decree and declare healing for anyone else and everyone else who has been uh, affected and is sick with this COVID. God, I pray that you touch them right now. And I I pray, God, right now that an acceleration of healing would take place in their body. And God, I pray that you would bring strength and health to them right now. Lord, touch Jason and Chastity right now. God, divinely intervene. In Jesus' name we pray. Let your glory be revealed upon the earth, God. Let your glory be revealed on each and every one of these prayer requests. God, I stretch forth my hand right now and speak over them in the name that's above every other name. I speak over them in the name of Jesus. I I plead the blood of Calvary right now for every, every sickness, every disease, every malady, every malfunction in their body, God, I decree and declare by the blood of Jesus Christ that we are healed and set free. God, I pray for deliverance right now. God, I pray for those that might be listening to me right now, God, that is bound by addictions. I bind every spirit of addiction right now, and I decree and declare that when the Son is set free, they're free indeed. And God, I pray that... That, Lord, whatever it is someone may be addicted to right now, God, I pray that it be be banished from their life right now in Jesus' name. God, let it die at the root. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we ask it all to your glory, Father. To your glory. And in Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Right there where you're at right now, just say amen. For all the promises of God, as Jimbo sung earlier, all the promises of God are yes and amen. Hallelujah. Just want to remind you to be with us on Facebook this Wednesday at 7 o'clock. We'll be doing our midweek update. We will be giving some final uh, direction and decisions on uh, going forward. But as it stands right now, we are we have every intention of being back here in service in person uh, on August uh, the 8th and we want to encourage you to come again if you feel like you know if you are cautious about it and feel like you need to mask up go ahead we're not going to mandate one way or the other that's entirely up to you uh, and and Again, we want you to pray about going forward as far as with uh, being vaccinated. Again, that's your choice. We stand by your choice. We stand with you uh, regardless of what your choice is. But I do want to encourage you to pray about it and seek God's counsel uh, concerning that. But as, as again, as we have said, it's our intention to be back here on August 8th. But tune in. Uh, on Facebook at 7 o'clock Wednesday for our update. Until then, may God's best always be yours and may your best always be given to God. God bless you. We love you. Have a blessed week.